Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NEOTA Network. We are very excited to welcome you to the event um, and even more excited to welcome you to the kickoff keynote. For the next two days, we're going to be going through several sessions. Um, you'll be able to, or you have, I'm sure, filled out your customized schedule to pick and choose the sessions that you found most interesting uh, or the stream that you found most interesting. Uh, today's keynote, we're really, really excited to kick things off. We wanted to kick them off with a bang. Um, so we're going to start with Mark Cohen. So Mark is the CEO and founder of Legal Mosaic. And today's talk is part of the streams of corporate legal law firms and especially thought leadership, but really apply to a lot of different uh, aspects to the, the legal technology, the legal space and the technology space. Um, so today's talk is about the legal function in the digital age. Um, so Mark is going to walk us through some considerations in how law and legal functions and business are developing in the digital age. Um, so we're really excited for this talk, really excited for the next two days of content and sharing apps and sharing ideas and understanding the space that we work in a little bit better. Um, and to kick it all off, why don't we pass it over to Mark. Mark, over to you. Thanks, Max. And uh, it's great to be here at the uh, NEOTA Network Conference. Uh, you know, uh, many years ago, uh, Ferris Bueller, I don't know how many of you remember this, uh, the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but uh, he had a lot of great lines. One of my favorites of which was, uh, life comes at you pretty fast. Um, and that was back in the 80s. Can you just imagine what Ferris Bueller would be saying today? Because life is uh, coming at us all so much faster uh, than it ever has. Um, and um, the, um, this is really a, a time when everything is uh, accelerated. Um, and that acceleration has increased exponentially during COVID times. And one particular um, aspect of acceleration is the rate of change in business. And uh, that has had a carryover effect on the change in uh, the legal industry. And so that's kind of a bit of a rough context for what I'm going to be talking today, um, the legal function in the digital age. Um, so we all know that the legal industry is changing. Um, there's a lot of back and forth about what is causing the change, um, why it's occurring, um, and how it's all going to play out. Uh, I am not necessarily going to be uh, opining as to how it's going to be playing out, but I think that there are some very clear data points uh, and there are some very clear indications as to the direction that the legal industry is moving. Um, and I think that the best way to really understand and explain legal change is to look at going, what's going on with law's customers, uh, or uh, as uh, lawyers like to call them, their clients. And I just make a, a preparatory note that um, clients are a very specific kind of customer, um, that clients refer, of course, to the, uh, the very unique relationship between those engaged in the practice of law um, and uh, their clients. Um, and that of course uh, entails um, various ethical responsibilities on the part of lawyers. Um, that entails um, a, an expectation of confidentiality and all sorts of other things. However, uh, lawyers have a tendency and those in the industry have a tendency to conflate the practice of law, which is narrowing uh, increasingly as time goes on. In the UK, for example, um, they set out to uh, talk about those uh, activities that can only be performed by licensed attorneys. And those activities are down to six, only six activities, which means that there are a lot of activities in the legal industry that do not require licensed attorneys. And I like to collectively refer to those as the business of delivering legal services. So one of the things that is really changing dramatically in the legal industry, and I would say it's probably being uh, spurred on by business, 
um, is that there is a divergence between the practice of law, which is actually shrinking, and the business of delivering legal services, which are expanding rapidly. Uh, and those two uh, activities, which ultimately must be integrated um, to serve customers and to better serve society at large, those two activities must, to be successful, be integrated. Um, and I'm going to get into that uh, in a few minutes in terms of uh, how I conceive of what it means uh, to engage in the legal function in the digital age. Um, but back to legal change. Uh, we also know that um, there is a kind of a split of authority uh, within the legal industry. Um, there are many, particularly lawyers, uh, who seem to feel that change is anathema. They like things just the way they are and the way they've been literally for generations. Um, and up until about 20 years ago, there was very little change in the legal industry, certainly in the almost 50 years that I have been in um, uh, uh, both a practicing lawyer and in the business of law. Um, but in the last 20 years, you've seen a lot of changes, and particularly in the last 10 years, and even more specifically in the last five years, uh, there have been a tremendous number of changes, and they have spilled over into the legal industry. So, for example, you've seen a tremendous uh, acceleration of uh, application of technology to the legal function, even though law still certainly lags other industries in terms of its adaptation and use of technology. Um, you have seen disaggregation of legal services meaning that um, there is a more recognized divide between practice activities and business of law activities. Um, you've also seen um, new kinds of legal providers coming to the fore. Um, you've seen a bit of regulatory change, not so much in the United States, but certainly you've seen it in the UK, in Australia, and in other jurisdictions uh, around the world, particularly uh, on the continent of Europe. Um, but law is still definitely lagging business. And it's really, I think, the change in the legal industry is as much a business story with a legal twist to it as it is a purely legal uh, story. And what do I mean by this? Well, about five years ago, um, business uh, established digital transformation as a corporate priority. Um, this was even before the days of COVID. Um, and um, this uh, is a, a, a expression, a term, digital transformation, that I'm going to spend a few minutes in just a moment uh, to try to give uh, my definition of what it is and what it is not. Um, but before doing that, um, I just want to say that in terms of the business perspective, um, the business perspective is, is, is engaging in a radical reformation of itself, how it conducts business, um, what, what it needs to do ultimately to satisfy customers and to deliver them products and services in a way that is more accessible, uh, more transparent, more affordable, um, easier to deal with, and provides an end-to-end -end positive experience. Law has lagged in this process. And let's just consider for a moment the legal record. Um, because for those who say that why should the legal profession particularly and the legal industry more generally, why should we change? Um, there are some in the industry, uh, myself included, who say that we can't change fast enough. And we base our, our rationale on, uh, just let me give you a few data points as to how um, the legal industry can and must do better, not only for its clients, not only for its customers, but for society writ large. Consider the following. In the United States, about 85% of Americans who have real significant legal problems are effectively denied access to lawyers. Um, consider that two-thirds of American businesses 
um, who have so-called bet the company problems, legal problems, are effectively denied uh, representation, um, largely because of cost, but there are other reasons as well, such as reasonable access um, in terms of uh, being able to um, not only afford lawyers, but have access to the kinds of expertise that they need on a readily available and, and cost-effective basis. Um, trust in lawyers. Uh, there have been any number of studies that say trust in lawyers and the legal industry is at an all-time low. Lawyers have a very let, net, low net promoter score. Um, law school debt to become a lawyer now uh, puts the average law student into six-figure debt and does not particularly train lawyers for the marketplace that they are entering into. There is an enormous court backlog, um, which predated COVID and now has gotten even that much worse. Um, lawyers are not a particularly happy profession. Uh, it's not a particularly happy industry. Um, for example, next to coal miners, lawyers have the highest rate of suicide, drug abuse, alcoholism, divorce, um, mental health problems, et cetera. Um, so law can and must do better. And the tools, the models, the resources, the processes um, exist to improve things. And here is, I think, where the opportunity is for the legal industry. Um, but before going into that, I want to talk for a minute about digital transformation and what it is because um, we can't talk about legal change without talking about business digital transformation. Um, so business uh, digital transformation rather is a, a, a very uh, commonly used um, but widely misunderstood if not just plain fuzzy term. So let me just say a couple of things of what um, digital transformation is not. Digital transformation is not solely about technology. Technology is the enabler of business transformation. Technology is the backbone of digital transformation. But technology of and by itself is not what people um, mean when they are talking about digital transformation. That is people who really understand the term. Likewise, data, which The Economist in a famous 2017 article called The New Oil, um, data is really a tremendous lifeline um, for uh, predictability, for projection, for risk mitigation, for so many things. Um, data is really what is driving business, um, and data is a, of great value. But the legal industry has largely been a laggard, both in terms of adoption of technology as well as application of data. Um, but, but technology and data alone, though critically important elements of data transformation, are not the entire story. So that begs the question of what is? Um, well, it starts with what is the ultimate purpose or objective of digital transformation? Because business is not changing simply for the sake of change, but rather digital transformation is a fundamental paradigm shift in the buy-sell dynamic. Uh, it used to be that providers of products and services had an asymmetrical uh, advantage over customers. Um, they had much better market understanding. They had um, basically uh, a, a kind of opacity um, that has now given rise to increasing transparency because of the availability of information on the internet. Um, and because customers now are beginning to see that they have more choices than they ever thought they had, they can go online and they can find a whole bunch of uh, organizations who can provide uh, what used to be almost a single source type of product or good or service. Um, and this has really caused business to rethink how it's going to conduct its 
itself. Um, it's going how it's going to use technology um, to better provide a, a, a accessibility, transparency, choice, um, and 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 more cost effective products and services for customers. It's also enabled business to say, how can we use data to measure our internal efficiency, to uh, predict and gauge risk, um, to be able to share it with our clients in terms of um, various things. For example, if we have a high net promoter score, we want clients to know um, that our other clients and customers would recommend us to friends and family and others. Um, we want to be able to measure the effectiveness of our products and services from the customer perspective. So think in terms of Uber. Why is it that we know more about the uh, performance record of an Uber driver than we do about our lawyers? Um, that is, is, is something that you know, is, is going to change. Um, it's changed in business and it is increasingly going to change in um, the legal function. So digital transformation at the end of the day requires a, a cultural change on the part of um, organizations, a singularity of purpose to better serve customers and ultimately society. And that's where you get into things like ESG. Um, the corporations today are not only um, thinking in terms of how can we be more profitable, and the answer is we can be more profitable by having a better and um, much less transactional and much more long-term relationship-driven um, uh, uh, dynamic with our customers. Um, we can do well by aligning with our employees and our supply chain, uh, and we can do well by being better um, corporate citizens. This is the essence of digital transformation. It is not change for change sake, but it is utilizing the, the technology, the data, the, the, the human resources, and thinking more about not what have we done historically that has made us successful, but how can we use these new resources available to us how can we reorganize the way we do things uh, in a way that is designed to better serve our customers? This is the backdrop for the legal function in the digital age. Because as I said before, um, law has been a digital laggard. And uh, of course, we can't have this discussion without talking about COVID. COVID has not you know, sort of created digital transformation. COVID has not created these changes which were already underway, but COVID has dramatically accelerated the pace of digital transformation. Don't take my word for it. Um, take the words of uh, this Microsoft CEO, Satya Nadella, who said during er uh, an earnings call about uh, one quarter into um, the pandemic, that we have seen at Microsoft um, more digital transformation in the last two months than we have in the last two years. So some of you may be wondering, okay, so when is he going to get to the legal function? Um, and I'm gonna get to it right now, but with the underscoring the fact that the legal function, which has long operated as its own kind of siloed island, um, is now very much um, being um, reformulated by business to be more fit for purpose for business, not to be fit for purpose necessarily for lawyers as lawyers have always done things, but rather how can the legal function better serve the enterprise and its customers? Now, I realize that I'm talking mainly about the corporate sector of the legal industry, but what I'm going to say applies equally, I believe, um, to the so-called retail or individual or small and mid-sized enterprise segment of the market. 
And that is that the legal function increasingly is being held to account to um, rethink the way it, it delivers its products and services in, in a way that is going to um, better serve the interests of the enterprise and the end user, which in the case of corporations, you think of um, the legal function essentially has two customers. One is the enterprise and the other is the enterprise's customers. Um, and that is the essence of um, how the legal function is going to start to operate differently uh, in the digital age. Because law has long been a function that is thought to be discreet, that is thought to be bespoke and special. But increasingly, um, the business uh, community is expecting the legal function to operate as an integrated part of business, to use technology platforms that will enable it to better integrate with business, to collaborate with business, to be proactive in terms of defending business, and also to proactively collaborate with other business units to create value for the enterprise and its customers. So for example, um, in terms of contract management, um, the legal function is increasingly being called upon to work with sales to figure out how can we compress um, sales cycles? How can we make contracts um, more iterative, um, use technology to um, allow them to be modified almost on the fly, to be more living documents than static documents. Um, and there are any number of ways that both technology and data and a reimagination of what is the purpose of contracts. It's not for lawyers to engage in protracted back and forth with um, hypotheticals of what if this and what if that to the end of time. It is to allow the parties who want to engage in contracts uh, to be able to arrive at them quickly and to have the flexibility to change things um, as a change, uh, unforeseeable change um, occurs. Likewise with litigation. Um, it's not so much to um, uh, uh, make uh, litigation to nibble around the edges, it's, it's rather digital litigation really is to say whose purpose is, is this protracted uh, uh, litigation process? Uh, whose purpose is this, is this uh, a survey? Because if you look at the data on litigation, you see the average case in the United States, the average civil case goes on for three years. 99% of civil cases end up getting settled and well over half of them get settled within the first, um, within the last 30 days before trial. Um, that should tell you something. And digital litigation is saying, let's change that paradigm. Let's look at the litigation process and say, how can we use technology? How can we use data? How can we change the paradigm to try to compress um, the information process into the first 30, 60, 90 days of most cases? And then how can we quickly and effectively, based on data, based on analytics, how can we resolve cases much more quickly so that we can free up lawyers to do other things and so that we can free up business um, to do its core activities, which is to focus on customers, not to focus on disputes. So these are some of the ways that digital litigation, uh, pardon me, that uh, digital transformation um, can be applied, not just to the business of, uh, of law, but also to the practice of law. Um, so, um, in terms of the legal function in the digital age, to wrap up, um, what does this mean? Um, and what are some of the things that are going to change, uh, both for those who are engaged in the practice of law and those who are involved in the business of delivering legal services? Well, some of those things are going to be the following. One is that the legal function, like business, is going to become 
much more customer focused. And to be customer focused doesn't just mean um, to call up your uh, customers every once in a, in a quarter and invite them out for dinner. Customer focus means to reimagine everything that you do as a, as a function, not from your own perspective, but from what is going to advance the interests of customers. So for example, it's not just technology, it's not just data, it also involves process and it also involves culture and human behavior. How can the legal function um, utilize, um, how can it work more as a team? Not just internally, where these boundaries between um, you know, people who are practicing law and people who are in the business of law, these are not two separate functions. They are integrated. They must be integrated. And likewise, not only must they be integrated within the legal function, but increasingly, the legal function must um, act with other parts of the enterprise. Recent study conducted by the Digital Legal Exchange, um, I, I, I encourage everybody to take a look at it. It's www. DLEX, that's D L E X dot org. Um, it is a not for profit. I happen to be the executive chairman of it. So I'm giving a shameless plug, but we are, we are uh, focused exclusively on working with many of the largest companies in the world, aligning the legal leadership with the business leadership in an effort to extract more value from the legal function. Um, take a look at www. Uh, .delex.org. Take a look at what we're doing, how we're approaching it. Um, certainly, as I said before, technology is going to become uh, increasingly important in the delivery of legal products and services, as will data and data analytics. Um, the legal function is going to be increasingly diverse. Um, not just in terms of ethnic composition, but equally in a much more holistic way in terms of diverse uh, backgrounds, in terms of diverse skill sets, in terms of diverse perspectives, in terms of diverse cultures. Um, and the legal function is also going to be much more diverse in terms of collaborating with other business functions um, to drive value. And make no mistake about it, um, a recent study by EY and Harvard uh, Center for the uh, Legal Profession has determined that um, approximately 75% of all businesses now expect the legal function um, to create value. Um, and that statistic, uh, that data point has been uh, affirmed by uh, the um, digital legal exchange survey uh, that came up with the same number and the same conclusion. Uh, paradoxically, many people think that um, technology is perhaps going to replace lawyers or at least reduce their numbers. Um, I think it's going to create new opportunities for lawyers to liberate them from doing things they probably should not have been doing in the first place, but were constrained to do it because there were no other means for doing it. But now, for example, technology is going to replace certain legal tasks, such as uh, document review and whatnot. But at the same time, it's going to create new jobs, more interesting jobs that are going to allow lawyers to once again reclaim their sense of purpose of this is why I went to law school. Um, but it's going to require lawyers to be agile. And by that, I mean that they're going to have to be able to connect dots they're going to have to see the big picture beyond just the uh, legal services. Um, and increasingly, they're going to have to become more empathetic. And in an age of technology, one might think, well, what does empathy have to do with it? Well, ultimately, it has a lot to do with it because lawyers have really lost sight of the fact that their primary purpose is to help solve problems and, and now increasingly to help identify opportunities. That requires an ability to be empathetic and to be able to collaborate with others. Um, they're going to become more multidisciplinary. Um, they're going to have to become learners for life. 
used to be that if you uh, earned your law degree and you ticked the box and you took your CLEs, you were set for a legal career. That's no longer going to cut it. Um, lawyers are going to have to continue as, as do people in business and other sectors. They're going to have to continue um, to stay abreast, not only of what's going on in their industry, but increasingly how their industry is intersecting with other industries. I think that the legal function is going to become less hierarchical, which I think is a very good thing. Leadership is going to come from not one single source down, but from multiple sources. Um, lawyers and the legal function are going to become less pedigree centric. They're going to be much more concerned with who has necessary skills, who has the right mindset um, to be able to do um, uh, certain functions that are needed. Um, they are going to ultimately, I think the digital legal function is going to um, be charged with restoring trust in the legal profession and the legal industry. Um, they are going to uh, elevate the importance and focus of the customer as well as their societal impact. Um, and I think, as I mentioned just a moment ago, all this bodes well because I think lawyers have an opportunity to reclaim their sense of purpose. I know so many lawyers, uh, who many of whom are making very, very good livings, um, but they are seemingly lacking a sense of purpose. Is this, is this all I'm doing? Um, yes, they're, they're, they're making a good living, which is great, um, but they somehow feel a little bit devoid. And you have to, I think, uh, have passion to really excel at what you're doing. And it's hard to have passion if you really don't understand the purpose for why you are doing something. So in closing, I'll just say that digital transformation is both a challenge and an opportunity. And it is something that the legal uh, industry is being challenged with. It's being challenged with changing, but that change is not just, as I say, change for change sake. It's being challenged to align more with business. It's being challenged to contribute more to society. And I think it is a great opportunity for the legal function today to reclaim a lot of its lost luster, to reclaim uh, trust, uh, and ultimately to do things that give purpose and elevate the impact and importance of the legal function. And that to me is the legal function in the digital age. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, Mark. That was fantastic. Um, you know, I think a lot of great insight uh, not only in what's applicable for, you know, the current age of the legal space uh, and how it's transforming and is getting transformed by the digital space and, and sort of the technological revolution, but as well, uh, a lot of thoughts for what's to uh, come in the, in the years coming. So thank you again, Mark, uh, really fantastic. And thank you to everyone who's joined us uh, on this first installment of the Neota Network. Uh, like I said off the top, we have tons of great content for the rest of today and even more great content coming tomorrow. So feel free to sign on to more sessions or different streams or if something piques your interest with the breakout sessions, please join those too. So thank you again for joining us and we look forward to the rest of the Neota Network. Cheers. See you at the next session.